Uh, now, we, we eventually circle the plane and get down to it. The desert, how would the Desert Fathers react to uh, dispensational theology? The, uh, the Desert Fathers uh, are uh, monks, typically, um, and let's, um, let's go to Wikipedia on the Desert Fathers, just so that we're all on the same page here. Um, and uh, the Desert Fathers and the Desert Mothers were early Christian hermits, ascetics, monks who lived uh, in the uh, Setes Desert of Egypt beginning around the third century. Uh, monastic communities, basically, uh, is uh, what they were. And here's, uh, you know, if you want uh, a Wikipedia version of the history, which may or may not be right, uh, here is... Um, some of the information that uh, you'll get. Their practices withdrawal from society, uh, hash, uh, chasm. This is a uh, um, chasm is a separation. Uh, so uh, the uh, stillness, rest, quiet, science, silence, charity, forgiveness, recitation of scripture are some of the things uh, that uh, were there. Let's uh, let's pick a a saying. A hermit said, take care to be silent, empty your mind, attend to your meditation in the fear of God, whether you are resting or at work. If this, you, if you do this, you will not fear the attacks of demons. Or sit in thy cell and thy cell will teach thee all. If you have a very smart cell, perhaps. Um, that, that is a mystical idea there. Sit in thy cell and thy cell will teach thee all. It's the idea that if we just sit, knowledge comes. We ruminate it in our mind and knowledge comes. That requires either that there is an innate knowledge or that as we sit, we get revelation. Now, how would the fathers react to dispensational theology? I think they would uh, fully reject it. And I think they would fully reject it because dispensational theology uh, requires a literal reading of the word. And the literal reading of the word, first of all, does not lend itself to asceticism, to a, a hermetic uh, kind of life. Uh, uh, hermit, by the way, is a Greek word, comes from a Greek word, um, uh, which is the word for desert. So that's where we get desert fathers. Uh, but uh, the, the scripture doesn't teach nor lend itself to aiming there if you take it literally. Uh, and furthermore, and even more important than that, is the fact that the desert, uh, the the uh, the literal interpretation of the word, requires that the word of God is our sole source of revelation, that we are not receiving continued revelations, and we don't know the word of God unless we read the word of God, and therefore, the the monastic kind of lifestyle, or again, to take this Abba Moses, whoever Father Moses is, uh, obviously he's got a fake name. He's not Abba Moses. I don't know if you're the informatist or not, but this guy is not Father Moses. I can tell you that. Uh, sit in thy cell and thy cell will teach thee all. Well, again, uh, maybe if he means sit there and study the Bible, let, let Read the Bible literally, interpret the Bible using the scripture and scripture alone. All you've got there is your Bible and learn from the Bible and you'll get there. If he's got that, I'm good with it actually. But that's not what he means. That's not what the, the desert fathers mean. They, they mean sit there and let the innate knowledge within you and the knowledge that is present uh, going out through the uh, molecules of the cell and uh, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, floats around indivisibly and the, uh, uh, the power of God opening up your mind and inserting that. Not, that's, it's mysticism. Uh, 
And that mysticism is very, very popular today. That mysticism came about, I think, or its popularity came about in uh, um, among um, some a lot of modern teaching because evangelicals taught a lot of mysticism. You know, they said, go into your prayer closet and uh, just listen to what God has to say to you. They didn't say, go study the word, uh, study to rightly divide. They didn't say any of that. They just said, go see what God says to you. Uh, And the truth is that the truth is not embedded within me. And so me just by myself, I... I, I can't go any farther. I've, I've got the knowledge that I've got. You know, maybe I can systematize it a little in my mind and that helps me, but I can't get any uh, word from God that straightens out my thinking. Furthermore, uh, there's no community by which someone to say, I'm sorry, Randy, but that's just dumb. You can't, you, th- those don't go together. We need that kind of community, I think, to uh, help uh, pull us back into the word. Uh, And and then it it presumes upon uh, some kind of knowledge that's out there that we can get just by sitting. Uh, It's it's an osmosis kind of theology. And dispensationalism rejects an osmosis kind of theology. Dispensationalism can be cold as a stainless steel sink. uh, And that's why some people don't like it. They like a little more of the feeling that goes uh, with... uh, say, evangelicalism or Catholicism or Eastern Orthodoxism or, uh, or monasticism. There's kind of a, this sort of cool feeling about that. Uh, and I get it. You know, I live up in the mountains. I like to go out by myself. Uh, I like to uh, shut the door of my study and, uh, you know, just uh, study. But, but I'm, I'm such a concrete thinker that I take the Bible with me um, and uh, and, and get it uh, there. And as Jerry says, empty the mind is an Eastern mysticism idea. Uh, as in transcendental med- meditation, yoga, there's nothing Christian about it, quoting from uh, Jerry, and I totally agree. Uh, the, the monastic idea, which is the Eastern mystic idea, which is the transcendental meditation or the yoga idea is to come empty your mind. Now, a lot of these people so emptied their mind that their brains fell out. They, they just have nothing there. You can, uh, you can, you know, put uh, uh, up. I just went uh, the other day uh, over to uh, Echo Amphitheater here in uh, New Mexico, and uh, you know, you can uh, you can put your mouth up to. Uh, their um, their ear and shout in, and it just uh, echoes back and forth. Their mind is so empty. I I just take the approach that uh, God has um, given us. I'm trying to find you a picture of Echo Amphitheater. It's a very hard thing to take a picture of because it's uh, it's big, um, but. Uh, their mind is somewhat like that. Here's here we were close. Uh, let's see. That's just some of the rocks. Well, it's it's up. It's right there. You can't really see because of the shadows there. But uh, there it is. It's just this. The wind has hollowed out there. It's uh, it's empty, and so you go into it. And uh, uh, if I put a uh, uh, you know, the sound of it there, then uh, you would hear it. See if we get up close. Maybe I've got some, oh, there it is. But again, you can't even tell that it's hollowed out there. Um, and uh, you can uh, just uh, hear uh, hear the echo going. An empty mind will just echo chamber itself and you will spin around in your own stupidity. And when you do it, you say, oh, I'm so much at peace. Oh, so much at peace. Don't let that peace fool you because let me tell you what's going to happen next. Oh, I'm so much at peace. Oh, 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 the uh, the sun, does it come up? Does it come up? Does it go down? Do we go around? Do we go, oh, 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 That's what happens to people who empty their mind because they lose the grounding. I guarantee with a capital G, 
that if you find someone who is in the, in the practice of emptying their mind as the mystics did, you will find someone who has tremendous internal uh, infighting, internal, an internal battle that goes on within them. They just struggle to make any kind of sense of life. They, they, and it's, it's, this, it's this echo chamber. That's what happens when you empty your mind. Empty, 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 empty. Oh, I don't even know what day it is. I don't know who I am. I don't know if there's a God. I don't know. I don't know if the African violet is pretty or not. I don't know. I don't know because the mind is empty. The, 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 the desert fathers will lead you to internal turmoil. Yoga, transcendental meditation, all that Eastern mysticism is going to lead you to depression. No, it sets me free. Ah, it feels like it at the beginning. Because we get lots of garbage in our mind. We get stuck with things in our mind. We, you know, we, we, we get all the noise that uh, comes through. Uh, and so right at first, it does feel liberating. But, but trust me, you are going to end up depressed. And uh, any of you, by the way, who uh, struggle... Uh, with depression, you might ask yourself if you have been in the practice of emptying your mind. And maybe that's the reason you're, be, you're depressed. Uh, it, it, it does lead to, to depression. The reason for the depression is because you simply have no answers. You, you, you hear this stuff bouncing around in your head. Well, fill your head. Study to show thyself approved. Put the word of God in your head. And don't ruminate on the word of God. Study the word of God. How, where's the cross references? What does it mean? What does that word mean? You begin to fill your head with that kind of stuff. It'll set you free from the depression. If that's the source of the depression, maybe uh, there's probably other sources of depression we should talk about in a different way. But but if that's the source of the depression, it'll set you free. And from the uh, just the, the the confusion of this world, not being able to interpret the world. The reason you can't interpret the world is you have no biblical worldview. You have no biblical worldview because you've been sitting in transcendental meditation instead of reading, uh, as uh, Russell says here, filling your mind with scripture. Fill your mind with scripture. The, the, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Uh, and uh, he begins to go and he begins to work. So the desert fathers, how would they react to dispensational theology? I think they would say, no, 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 no. That's cold as a stainless steel sink. You're, you're missing out on the relationship. You're missing out on the insight that comes as you, as you uh, sit in your cell and your cell shall teach thee all. And so they would reject it uh, altogether. Now let's randomly take one more. I'm out of time. I just will keep going, right? Here's an elder. What's he say? Notice these, these guys don't have names. They don't have names because they don't know who they are. They're living a fake life. They were living a fake life. They lost their identity and probably their razor and their toothbrush too, but... Uh, the, the, none of them have names. You've got Abba Moses, uh, um, you know, a, 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 Abbot Pastor, an elder. Let's take this elder. A man who keeps death before his eyes will at all times overcome his cowardliness. Now, isn't that deep? I have no clue what it means, whether it's right, why I would care about that. Uh, you know, if, if you're a coward, um, I, I, I don't know. I used to be a coward. Honestly, I was, a, I was a people pleaser. I didn't keep death before my eyes to overcome my cowardness. I don't know how I overcame it. I think I got old. When you get old, you get mean. You get tired of putting up with stuff. You just tell it like it is. <laughs> So, you know, this stuff, is, is, oh, ooh, that's so pretty. That's so deep. That's so stupid. Um, let's see. 
Uh, let's find uh, just uh, one more. I was trying to find one that's not too long, not too short. Uh, one of the desert fathers told another of his plans to shut himself in his cell and refuse the face of men that he might perfect himself. You ain't coming out any more perfect. If you went in there ugly, you coming out ugly. <laughs> or dumb, or whatever it is. Uh, let's see. The uh, second monk replied, Unless thou first amend thy life, going to and fro amongst men, thou shalt to no avail amend it dwelling alone. Well, I, uh, that's kind of what I said. I think I agree with the second one. The second one was probably a dispensationalist. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they, they come up with all these things that sound, you know, here's some monks chanting and it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And, and, it, and it means nothing. Okay, I went a long time on uh, informatists uh, question. I like the question though. I appreciate it. Um, and let's see, I got a question from William, a question from Luca. Good to see you again. Uh, and uh, a question from uh, Charles and... Um, <laughs> I, I'll get back to informatus. I like uh, what he said. Okay, well, you didn't answer my question, but you did let me know that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I think the informaticist, I think, I think, by the way, it's informacist. I don't think it's informa, informaticist, but I don't know what the meaning of the word is there. Uh, the question, what would they do with dispensationalism? They would, they, they, they did reject it. Not what, what did, would they do, but they did because dispensationalism was there and they rejected it. And I said that, I don't know if you were uh, letting things ruminate in your mind or not, but they rejected it. Uh, read the book, Ancient Dispensational Truth and uh, dispensational theology was there. They rejected it. They chose mysticism instead. Uh, and you let me know that you don't know what you're talking about. And I probably don't. I am no expert on, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the desert fathers. I just know that all of their stuff was mystical. That is, they made it up in their own mind and it does not tie into scripture enough that anyone who reads scripture literally would accept it. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not an expert on the on the uh, the you know guys with the fake names, uh, but I certainly can an analyze it. And I tell you what, informaticist, if you will uh, give me a specific teaching of one of the desert fathers, not a 700 page, you know, tome, but give me a couple of paragraphs and say, you know, Abba Stupida said this while he was sitting naked in a cave. Uh, I will analyze it according to the word and we'll see. And uh, even a broken clock's right twice a day. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be like this guy, unless thou first amend thy life, Going to and from, uh, fro among men, thou shalt not avail to amend it dwelling alone. Yeah, the cave ain't going to help you. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to analyze some of those things, and I'd be happy to learn about some of uh, those things. And uh, we can grow together, informaticist. Been fun having all of you with us today. I'm a grumpy old man who despises mysticism. I think it's worthless. As Dan says, contemplating your navel will get you nowhere other than contemplating your navel. But hey, I gotta go do some goat yoga, so I better I better run. I know y'all got your goat yoga uh, uh, appointments as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wednesday. On Wednesday, we study the Gospel of John tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. I look forward to seeing you again. Oh boy, I went way over today, didn't I? Uh, but we had so much fun. Goat yoga, coming up. Stay tuned. We'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. <laughs>